Hey, it's Matt O'Leary, and it's time to talk about those new albums that are on my radar for 2024. First, I'm going to talk about the happenings, the ones that are on the calendar. They've got a release date. It's official. And a lot of those are in the next three, four months. Then I'm going to talk about the hopefuls, the artists that we're all waiting for something from, either because it's been a while and the clock is ticking, like maybe it was 2020, 2021 when they last released an album. Uh, or, you know, maybe they posted something kind of mysterious on social media. First up this week, we've got a couple reissued albums from the Cocteau Twins, who are, of course, the classic dream pop post-punk band from the 80s. Um, and it's their two most recent albums, Four Calendar Cafe and Milk and Kisses, which are two albums I haven't really dug into yet. So this will give me a chance to go and explore those. I've got into their earlier 80s stuff, some of their classics. Um, but yeah, just a great opportunity here. Then on January 19th, we've got a follow up to the debut album by a newer band called Glass Beach. This is a very odd art rock, uh, kind of mathy, emo tinged band that is a little bit more underground, obviously, than the Cocteau Twins, but got a lot of coverage with that debut album. And they're also from my college that I went to, the University of Minnesota Morris. So roll coogs. Then also on the 19th, kind of staying in this indie rock, emo tinged kind of sound, we've got a member of the band American Football, uh, Nate Kinsella with his project Birthmark. And this is going to be a follow up to the 2015 album, How It Looks When You're Falling Down, which is such an underrated indie rock record. I love it. I don't hear anything about it, but it's just a, a real staple for me. And then on the 26th is a new album by The Smile called Wall of Eyes. That's, of course, Tom York and Johnny Greenwood's project from Radiohead. It sounds a lot like Radiohead, kind of that eerie uh, kind of sound, but mixing in a lot of new sounds from jazz and Afrobeat and um, all sorts of stuff, even a little bit of kind of mathy guitars in there. So really looking forward to this one. That first one was a tough nut to crack, but after many listens, it became a, a gem from that year. Then also on the 26th is a progressive metal band from Australia, Caligula's Horse, uh, a band I've never really got into, but I really love these new singles. They sound great. They sound exciting. Um, so yeah, Charcoal Grace. Then lastly for January is Sarah Jerose with a new album. She is an Americana, uh, kind of bluegrass is in her roots, but also there's a lot of kind of country folk sound there. Very wholesome. Can't wait for that. February 2nd brings Jay Maskus with another solo album called What Do We Know Now? Uh, Jay Maskus, member of the band Dinosaur Jr., kind of a a classic, iconic indie rock band from the late 80s, 90s, 2000s. I think they even have a couple albums in the 2010s. I've just always really loved his unique voice. Um, and I can tell by these singles that the emphasis is really on writing over experimentation and trying to just do something weird. So like that. Also on the second is Paul McCartney and Wings with a reissue of Band on the Run, which is such a classic, classic rock album, an absolute staple of any record collection. Um, and the interesting thing about this reissue is they're doing this underdubbed mix. So they're stripping back to some of the earlier recordings of the songs, getting rid of some of the guitar layering and overdubs that came later. Uh, so really excited to hear that kind of fresh take on these songs, which are excellent from front to back. I mean, Band on the Run, Jet, you name it on that album, it's perfect. Then the prog guitarist from Genesis, Steve Hackett, has yet another solo album that also comes out on the second, I believe. Uh, no, that one's the 16th of February called The Circus and the Night Whale. Love the cover. Then another amazing cover. We've got Duck by the Aristocrats, which is the virtuosic trio they play it all, really. It's Guthrie Govan, Marco Miniman, and Brian Beller. It doesn't get better than that lineup, and I loved the last album they had, um, Pramu's Orchestra. I think it was with them. That was the title. So, yeah, duck. Who knows? Then at the end of February, to get back into this indie rock, uh, indie pop world, is MGMT with Loss of Life. That's a follow-up 
six years after Little Dark Age, which I've got just right back there, if you can see. Love that album. I thought it was just a, a revelation for them to come back with that thing in this new style, kind of a gothic take on synth pop and just so many catchy songs. It's just aged like a fine wine. Then we got Real Estate with Daniel coming out at the end of February. Don't know what to expect with that one. I like a couple albums from them. Um, it's kind of hit or miss, so we'll see. Then March 1st brings Big Big Train with The Likes of Us, great progressive rock band. Um, and then Everything Everything with Mountainhead, that's the synth pop, also from the UK. Uh, got one of the best singers in the whole rock game right now, Jonathan Higgs. Staying on the English train here, we got at the end of March, The Staves with All Now. This is a great trio of folk singers, sisters, I mean, they got it going on. Then we've got the hopefuls here. So I'm grasping a little bit with these, but some of them are a little bit more promising. Like Elbow said that they've um, confirmed a full UK tour in May, 2024 to accompany the release of their 10th album. So it sounds like that's gonna happen. Then I'd love to see something from the band Magdalena Bay, who put out an album in 2021. Be nice to get a follow up there. It was just a really immediate, catchy, snappy little synth pop album. Then I heard on Taste Like Music's channel that Daniel Romano is recording as well, who's kind of a folk rock, classic rock. If you like like Bob Dylan, then you'll probably like him. Um, very prolific guy, has a ton of projects and side things going on, but his solo projects, his solo albums are the best, I think. Uh, Modern Pressure and Finally Free. So if you like what you hear there, go check out those, but I'd love to hear another solo album instead of you know one of the other projects. Then I, I'd really love to hear something from James Mercer and The Shins. Uh, maybe not a Broken Bells album, but I'm hoping for a legitimate Shins album and a follow-up to 2017's Heartworms, which was a bit of a disappointment for me, especially after Poor Tomorrow in 2012, which I think is one of the most underrated, unappreciated indie rock albums, period. I mean, amazing album. And then a very similar story for this next band, one of my favorite bands of all time, The Strokes. I'm hoping come out with something after 2020's A New Abnormal, which got a lot of critical praise. I didn't quite get that record. I liked a few songs. At the Door was pretty sweet, but it's The Strokes, so my heart is wide open to a new Strokes album. Come on, Julian and the boys, I feel like they could get something going this year. I think Adrian Lenker from Big Thief will probably drop a solo album this year, so some really soft-spoken, artsy folk. Would love to hear something from Vampire Weekend as well. I think the last one had very fun vibe and energy. It was just a really easy album to put on in the house, very accessible. I didn't love it. It wasn't quite as adventurous, I think, as their earlier stuff, so I'd love to hear them get back to that. Bad, bad, not good. Would love to hear a record from them. They're the Canadian experimental jazz outfit. Kind of do, I think. Then, The Lemon Twigs, my number one album of this past year. One of my favorite bands going at the moment, probably them and The Deer Hunter are my two favorite that are like actively releasing stuff. So they dropped a single. I'm not listening to it because I'm that obnoxious dude and my wife's making fun of me and it's really bad and I'm so sorry, but I'm trying to just go into that new album free of any expectation um, except that it's going to be the best album ever. So yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be spring. I just, I think it's going to be earlier than we think. Then I mentioned the deer hunter. Of course, we're going to get Sunya at some point this year, the follow-up to Antimai, which was a great first step out of the ax. And yeah, just he can do no wrong. Okay, we've got two more here. The progressive metal Titans Mastodon should come back with something. If not this year, then next year. I just smell it. You know, they're always working and they put out their best album since Crack the Sky, I think, with Hushed and Grimm. So yeah, would love to hear that. Then last but not least is the Reina Kindo. They're due and 
I've mentioned that the Lemon Twigs and the Deer Hunter are my favorite active bands. I'm probably most excited about their new stuff, but the Reign of Kindo would edge them out a little bit as far as favorite bands of all time. So they have a very active Patreon. I've put out a lot of music in the last few years, but I want something cohesive and official in album experience. And yeah, I think they're due. And that is all I can think of right now. So if you have any more, do let me know who are those artists that you're looking for in 2024 to just do something huge. And as always, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>